Hi. Uh, cool. So my name is Brian Holt, uh, currently working at Netflix, and this is the most ill-advised talk I've ever given, in the sense that there's so many moving technology pieces that something is bound to, bound to break, and I'm excited to find out which one it is. So my first ill-advised piece is I'm going to be giving a talk out of the command line, because that's a good idea. Uh, throughout this entire talk, uh, please feel free to tweet at jsconfis. Um, there's going to be several poll questions, and you can answer them. And they should magically appear up here. First one is, what's your favorite framework of choice? It looks like people are already tweeting React. And I think that's just because that's the name of the talk. So whatever. Deal with it. Cool. So I'm going to talk about React and the idea of learn once, write anywhere. And this is kind of... Uh, struck me while I was reading their docs one day that the idea of learn once, write anywhere. Most of us are familiar with PhoneGap or Cordova or Ionic or any one of these particular uh, frameworks that are trying to be uh, write once, run anywhere. And to me, that's kind of a pipe dream. Uh, so that's why I kind of latched on to React learn once, write anywhere. So let's talk a little bit. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm Brian Holt, whatever, no one cares. And I work at Netflix, which is uh, pretty great. Uh, I like wasting all of your time. <laughs> and where I used to work before Netflix was Reddit, so I really like wasting your time. <laughs> cool. So let's uh, let's chit chat a sec about React. First of all, if you ever went to, if you went to Lynn's talk, it was fantastic about performance. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit more high level if you're not intimately familiar with uh, React. So it's it's a it's a library for creating views, and that's kind of like just the high level, that's exactly what React is for. Uh, it was created for the DOM. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was created at uh, Instagram, and then just kind of slowly took over everything in the entire world, including Netflix, Facebook, uh, Firefox, what else is out there? Lots of things are now being written in React. Um, super, super great library. Um, it's a pattern for writing UIs. Um, and so we, we kind of got stuck with MVC as front-end developers, right? Like, uh, MVC is super awesome for the back end. Uh, if you've ever written Ruby on Rails, Django, like that kind of abstraction of MVC model view controller works really, really well. Hey, it looks like someone likes Backbone. Go team. Um, so it works really, really well for the for the back end, like this, this separation of concerns if you have the models that talk to the database, you have the views that actually talk out to the clients, and then you have the thin little controllers that kind of wire all your data about. This works super well for, for back end programming. And then people thought, like, this is an awesome idea. I'm going to apply this to, to the DOM. And it turned out that it's actually not such an awesome idea. If anyone's maintained a huge backbone app before, it can fall apart at the seams sometimes. There are great backbones out backbone apps out there, but you have to be very disciplined to get them uh, to work well. So some daring individuals decided to look at this and said, there has to be a better way. We should write a paradigm that's specifically for writing UI libraries. And so they kind of came up with this idea of request response, right? Because that's kind of what the web has been like for, for years, right? Like you request a web page and you get back a web page. That's kind of the idea. So they have to say, well, we can kind of generalize this abstraction and uh, apply it to more of a, a JavaScript framework. So they kind of came up with the, this idea of given a set of state, so I'm going to throw in state and I'm going to get an output of, uh, of DOM, right, or of whatever, of whatever my user interface that I'm, I'm looking for. And this ended up being really, really great. And then they came up with a bunch of crazy ideas of like how they can implement it with like the virtual DOM and crazy shit like that. But in, in the end of that, you actually don't have to care. Whenever you're writing uh, React, for the most part, you don't really have to care how it's doing it. You just have to write your code and say, given this set of state, my output looks like this. <laughs> Lol, JavaScript. <laughs> Go team. OK. Um, so let's take a second to talk about what exactly is going on with this craziness up here. This is written in for a library called Blessed. Did anyone check out uh, Ken Wheeler's uh, Webpack dashboard? Did anyone see that come up on Twitter? Yeah, super cool, right? Same library. I used it first, though, so <laughs> suck on a Ken. I hope he's watching the live feed. Uh, so anyone heard of curses, right? Like, this is blessed, right? It's, instead of being curses, it's blessed. It's a, it's a dumb joke. But uh, that's what they went with. Uh, so blessed is a 
you can write user interfaces for the command line uh, using Node, right? That's all blessed is. And then someone thought, like, well, I mean, we're writing user interfaces. Why can't we point uh, React at that? So that, this actually is written in React blessed. So I wrote a user interface for the command line using React, which is pretty awesome. So I was able to use all the same tools that I use for the DOM, uh, use Babel, whatever, and I was able to target uh, the command line using React, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, let's go back to, to talking about React for just, uh, just a moment here. Um, actually, JK, LOL, we're gonna go back for just a sec. So uh, most of us are, uh, have worked with React before, or at least are familiar with it, and there's two packages here. There's React and there's React DOM, right? And this is kind of confusing for newcomers to the, to the React world because they're thinking, I don't understand why I need both these packages. I, have, I want to write React and I want it to render out to the DOM. And that's kind of the way it started, right? Uh, up and through till React point 13, 14, something in that area, those were the same package. You just downloaded one React and it just worked. And then these crazy people over Facebook's like, let's write React and have it target iOS and Android. And so they started writing these uh, React components that instead of targeting the DOM, they started targeting native platforms. And so they realized that like, we're using the same paradigms, using the same lifecycle methods, all these different pieces that are built straight into React. They're writing real React components and just that last mile, right, the last mile of delivery was the only part that differed. So they decided, like, let's break out the part that actually writes it out to the DOM, call that React DOM, and now we have this generalized React library that it doesn't actually care what it's targeting. It just makes components, right? It's just a way of declaring the way that your components should look. And now we can do things like React Native and React Blessed and all these other crazy things that people shouldn't do but are gonna do anyway, like this talk. <laughs> uh, so that's what, that's what React Blessed is, that's what React DOM is, is that's these last mile libraries, and that's kind of what this talk is about, is all the crazy, awesome stuff you can do with the React library just by swapping out that last mile. Uh, cool. So yeah, let's go back to talking about why React is so cool and why it's kind of took off, right? Like it's the new shininess that everyone's talking about. Half these conference talks are about them. Like if you write Angular or Ember, especially if you write Ember, you're probably sick about hearing about React, but let me tell you still why it's cool. It's about creating components. And that's, for me, that's kind of the bottom line. Like you t instead of having these, in, in terms of UI development, arbitrary separation of concerns, we decided to take all the concerns for very small pieces and then just mush them all together in just this unholy matrimony, which ends up being uh, really great. <laughs> I'm doing a great job selling it. Um, so you, you take all these components and or these concerns and you mash them all together for, for uh, these very small components. But what's really, really awesome by smashing all these co um, concerns together, if you're looking at your you know, web page and say like the, the login button's broken, like the text is wrong or something like that, let's pretend for a second that this is Angular. And I pick on Angular just because it's the one I know the best, but lots of frameworks have had this problem before. It could be a jQuery app, it could be just a plain vanilla JS app. You look at it, you see the button text is wrong, and you think, okay, I have a bug, where is my bug? I don't know. If it's Angular, it could be the directive, it could be the controller, it could be the template, it could be the template for the directive, it could be one of the many services that you decided to inject, it could be the library that brought it in, right? Like there's just all, in other words, you have no goddamn clue where it is, right? Just by knowing that you have a bug, you're no, really not much closer to finding it. Now what's nice about React, if you see the component has a problem with it, the problem is in the component. Like, it just has to be there because all the concerns live there. Now, I'm simplifying a tiny bit, right? Like, I guess it could come from, a, like, a user interface library that, that you are using in conjunction or something, something to that effect. Uh, but my point still stands that you have a very, very good intuition of where it lives, and you have at least the beginning of the trail to go find what's wrong with it. And I think that's having a beginning point when finding a bug is, is already a huge step up. So, yeah, it's a pattern for crea creating user interfaces. That's what React is, it's a pattern for user interfaces. And other 
community started eyeing this and say like, this is really great. Like I like this declarative method of declaring my components and saying kind of this reactive way of saying, okay, given this set state, then these props need to change what I passed on to my children. It just made sense. And not only does it make sense for the DOM, it makes sense for a lot of user interfaces. As you can see here, this was really easy to write. This didn't take me very many lines of code that, and I wrote an entire presentation giving kind of piece of shit, let's be totally honest. <laughs> but I wrote this with not too many lines of code. Now, if I asked you today to go out in Node today and write user interfaces for the command line, first of all, you'd be like, why? But secondly, it'd be kind of hard to get started with that. But using React, this was actually really easy. Like, I don't have to know anything about writing for the command line. And to be honest, I really don't know that much about it. But I know a lot about writing React because I've been doing it for a long time, and I was able to knock this out super fast because I was able to take the, those same things I had learned for writing React for the DOM, re writing React for native, and so actually even at Netflix we're writing it for on TVs, PS4s, Xboxes, that kind of stuff. I was able to take those same learnings and apply it here. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty powerful. I was able to target a, a platform that I really don't know too much about, uh, which is pretty fantastic. So again, this is not the dream of write once, run anywhere, right? I can't take this same code and try and run it in the browser. I can't run it on a TV. That's, that's not a useful target, at least in terms of the technology, in my opinion, available today to us. However, the idea that I can learn this paradigm once and then apply it in many places, very, very fascinating to me and so far has pretty well held up. In fact, React, in terms of its ecosystem today, is very much about in embracing the differences in all the different platforms. If you're writing React Native for Android, you're encouraged to, if you need to drop into the Java layer and, and you know, knock out a couple pieces and then have that plugged back into React Native, those escape hatches are not only like available, but they're encouraged. And the same thing with React DOM. If you need to, you know, in component and mount, reference the window, bring in a jQuery plugin, for who else, <laughs> who knows why, uh, I wouldn't suggest it, but if you need to do it, you can do it, right? And so it's about embracing the differences in the platforms. So let's, let's just take a little sidetrack to uh, JSX. Let's be honest about people that wrote React who did not write React at first because it had JSX. This guy, this guy right here. I saw JSX and I was like, this is dumb. <laughs> like I just got JavaScript out of my HTML. I sure as hell I'm not putting HTML in my JavaScript. Like that was, that was my reaction when I first saw that blog post come out from Facebook. I was like, you guys just go write your PHP, your special PHP and leave me alone. Uh, and then I came back like a year later and I was like, ah, oh, shit, I was wrong. This is actually really great. So let's talk about well, like, what is JSX. It basically lets you write XML-like syntax, aka HTML for the most part, uh, directly in your JavaScript. And it's really just syntax sugar for, that just transpiles to function calls. That's 100% of what JSX is. But the reason why I like it is I'm writing code to mimic markup, right? Like ultimately that's what I want to do. I want to write code that ends up being markup. So if I'm writing code that's going to end up being markup, wouldn't it be great if I could just write the markup, right? And skip that kind of middle step. So that's what JSX aims to be. It's like you're trying to get HTML ultimately output to the DOM. So just write the HTML and then it'll transpile it into something that actually really works in JavaScript. And for the most part, introducing a build step is not really a problem anymore because most of us are using Babel, right? Most of us. Most of us want to be using Babel if we're not already using Babel. So introducing another plugin that transforms your JSX, typically not, not a problem. So uh, if you are holding out still because of JSX, I suggest one, everyone that I know that writes React eventually ends up on JSX, with one exception, but he's kind of weird, so it's cool. Um, but just give it a shot. Uh, and if you really, really don't like it, it's actually pretty easy to write uh, React without JSX. Uh, it's, it kind of sucks because there's like not many tutorials because again, most people end up writing JSX, but uh, if you want to learn, then come talk to me and we can definitely figure it out together. And the other thing I like about JSX is it's very declarative, right? You're declaring, I want my markup to look like this, and I, that's also very appealing to me. Like I, as much as possible, I think declarative code is easier to read, easier to reason about, easier to maintain. 
all those things, which in my opinion make it empirically better. But that doesn't really make sense. Anyway, <laughs> so last thing is I actually had written this, I, uh, but I didn't want to bring it to Iceland, so I didn't. So there's another library called React Hardware that you can write React for the Arduino, which is like, right, like mind blown. But you can actually like, you know, turn on the breadboard and, you know, blink the lights, all that using just React, which is just fascinating to me that someone took the time to do this, but it was super fun to write. So all of this to say is it's really, really cool stuff going on with React, um, and I invite you to give it a shot. So I'm going to move to the second part of my presentation, and we're going to, now we're going to the React DOM. Uh, so where are you from? Feel free to tweet that out. Hopefully my server is still running. Uh, so yeah, React DOM is most prevalent today. That's kind of what React was created for and everything else is kind of trying to capture that magic that we already have with React. Um, it's being used at Netflix, it's being used at Reddit, Facebook, Google, Mozilla. Um, everyone is using it to build interfaces and it's pretty, pretty sweet. Huh, I have here my notes, it, it scales, which I think is just like the most bullshit thing to say. I don't even know what that means, but it, it scales. Um, <laughs> what that might mean is that it's really easy to use in teams because uh, you can treat components, like I write a component and you write a component, and they can kind of be black boxes to each other. Uh, with the way that React works, they kind of expose this like APIs, like, okay, I expect you to give me these things and I'm gonna do things with them, right? And they're secret things. You don't, you don't get to know what the, it does, right? Just kidding, I mean, you can look at the code, but you don't have to know what it does. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty awesome that you can treat your uh, colleagues' code as a, as a black box. That can be scary too if you don't trust your colleague, but then you have other problems, I suppose. Uh, so let's talk about like what this might look like. So this is kind of a, a typical React app that you might see, right? That you have these interior like drop-down components and then you have like an author panel. I don't even know what this is supposed to be. I grabbed it off Google image search. Um, but it's, it's a component made up of other components that is then inside of another component, which is then inside another component, right? So it's just components inside of components inside of components. But like something that you might notice, which is really cool, I have a couple of drop downs right here and then I also have a drop down over here. Or I have like a date picker over here. Like I write these little components and then I'm able to just use them across the site. My favorite example of that is I used to work at Reddit, uh, and you can think about a Reddit post, right? In a Reddit post, you can give gold, you can upvote, you can downvote, you can report to the admins, you can give a permalink. Uh, there's all these different behaviors that are commonly associated with posts, no matter where you put them, right? It could be embedded into another page, it could be on the comment view, it could be on the home page, it could be on a subreddit view, all these different pages that display the same component. Well, it's kind of annoying to have to either copy and paste these, um, you know, the JavaScript associated with these, all these behaviors that also have to come with the markup and all the styling and all that kind of things. The nice thing about React is I write this drop down or this Reddit post and I'm able to embed it in all these different places and it brings with it all of its styling, it brings with it all of its behavior. It's very, you know, dry, do not repeat yourself kind of an idea. And I think that's, uh, Pretty awesome. In fact, what you're seeing here is another presentation crazy thing that I decided to write. Oh, you can't see that. Well, there, I swear there are, hmm. See, there are things down here. People are tweeting. <laughs> We're just gonna leave it like this, right? This is readable. <laughs> no, okay, well, I promise there's a whole row and they're very pretty and I can see them. It's mostly Iceland, let's see. There's like seven Iceland tweets, five US ones, three world ones, and yeah, that's it. Okay, so tweet some more and then you can, it'll make another row on top of it. Uh, props down, action up. So this is really what kept me in React. The idea with React is this idea of one-way data flow, uh, which is this amazing idea of Parents pass down pieces of data and callbacks to the children and the children can read them and they can call the functions, but they can't actually modify them. They're read only, they're immutable to the child. 
which means that if there is a problem with that state, it means the child didn't muck with it because the child simply cannot muck with it. And that really reduces your surface area for bugs. And I hope you're kind of getting a theme here that React is very maintainable. It's very easy to track down these bugs. And I think it's a really compelling reason to use React. So you pass down these props, but when the child has like some sort of event, right? Like if say it's that date picker that we were just looking at, and it needs to inform the parent container that something happened. Well, the parent just passes down an up callback. The child says, hey, something happened. Here's the data I got. You deal with it, right? And then it passes that data back up to the, to the parent, and the parent is able to modify its own data. So if there's any problem with that modified data, the parent did it, right? Because only the parent can do it, which I also think is, is uh, pretty compelling. Let's see, I know what I can do. I can just unmaximize this. There you go, now you can see it. Another favorite part, favorite part I have about uh, React is that the best practices for Re React are usually just JavaScript best practices. And I feel like this is kind of a bold assertion to make because I'm in subtly implying kind of on purpose that that's not necessarily true of other frameworks. Um, but there, the, the nice thing about React is it's knowable. You can know everything about React. There is just, it's not very big in terms of uh, how many methods there are. I wish I probably should have gone and counted, but they're not very many. You can know the entire API. Whereas, is there anyone here comfortable in asserting they used the entire jQuery API in an app? No hands, no hands. Okay, no liars in the room, because it's impossible. There's like 300 methods, right? And that do wildly different things. And so that's why I feel comfortable in asserting that because there's such a small API, there's not a whole lot to React, and so most of the stuff that you're doing on the day-to-day -day is just writing raw JavaScript, which I think is also pretty, pretty damn compelling. Talked about this already. Um, React is definitely more declarative. You declare the way you want your components to work. React kind of fills in the, those, uh, those blanks for you. And React is community, woo! Look at that. Hold on, we're gonna take a picture. Wait, where is, my, there it is. That shit is getting tweeted. <laughs> so I, I was trying to find like a picture from React Conf. Save image as. That's embarrassing. Okay. So React is community. And I was, I was trying to find a picture of React uh, Conf and I couldn't find it. So I decided to take one of, of you all. Uh, React is a great community, and the other thing that's React as community is this is a webcam component that I did not program, but stole from NPM. Thank you, NPM. Uh, and it has everything built in. Like I, I took that screenshot, I didn't have to do anything that was already built in. So there's also a community of people that will help you out. So yay, go team. And React is a fad, absolutely. Like anyone that's not telling you that is totally deluding themselves. <laughs> like. Obviously, it's new shiny right now. We had new shiny Angular a couple years ago, and we had Backbone, Knockout, Gwit. Anyone still writing Gwit? <laughs> I'm sorry. <I'm> just <laughs> um, but I think the lessons that we're taking here from React are going to, to live with us for a long time. This idea of one-way data flow is gonna live with us for a long time. Um, we're gonna take a lot of these lessons and apply them to our future frameworks, or to our future user interfaces. And so, in that sense, writing React today, I think, is still a good thing because you're learning good practices of how to write maintainable, large apps, in production, all those sort of great things. So I, I have uh, my yet most uh, probably terrible idea for a demo, but we're gonna do it right now. All right, so I gotta open QuickTime here. I had it open, didn't I? Nope, okay, QuickTime. And new movie recording? Yeah, maybe? Cool. All right, so this is also written in React. This is written by or it's using a technology called, oh, that's not what I wanted it to do, called A-Frame. 
Look at that. Look at those pretty people. All right, and then we're gonna put this into Google Glass right here. All right, so if you, let's try refreshing this page actually. So A-Frame is a really cool tech that um, I believe Liv was her name was talking about this morning. It's a technology from our good friends at Mozilla that are, they're going to save the world from everyone. There we go. So if you tweet, that should come up there, I think. Except I would imagine that would be. Yeah, it looks like it's still working. So I know absolutely nothing about 3D programming, like zero things. But uh, I was able to write something in virtual reality where it would take your picture off of things you were tweeting and put it in virtual reality. Like, that is stupid easy. This is only like 100 lines of code or something like that. And I was able to do that just using technology, um, using the same things that I already knew about writing React for a sign-up process on Netflix. I was able to apply those same lessons and apply them into 3D. So I think it's pretty cool and pretty compelling. I don't think this is letting people tweet, which is disappointing. But nonetheless, I promise you it, it, it does actually work. Um, let's see if I can actually just do it on here. I'm almost out of time anyway, so. There we go. Oh, looks like someone is tweeting. So, yes, React Learn Once, Write Anywhere. It is a real thing if you take the time to learn React. And um, I think these lessons that we're learning now with React community are going to service into writing user interfaces for a long time. So, thank you.